Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our episode two of our Electricity League show. We've got Dean Clark and Gareth O'Reilly on the show. Cheers, Thanks very man. much for coming on, boys. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I suppose we'll kick things off with your game at the, on Friday night in Richard Park against Cork City. Not a very um, good result, but uh, talk us through the game a bit. Yeah, well, I think it was hard to come out with, with a loss because we played well, dominated the game for 85 minutes of the game. I know we were 2-0 down after 11-12 minutes, but even I've watched the game back now myself. and It's bizarre even like how we found ourselves 2-0 down because we had four or five corners. We, ha we ha seemed to have all the goals, uh, sorry, all the possession, and then two goals go against us and it looks like it's a disaster every day. Um, obviously the red card kind of gave us a lifeline that we didn't take in the end. Um, but no, it was tough to take. Now, like, well, watching watch, watch on the soccer public, it seemed like like um, you had a bit of a chance in the first half, went out for the corner, and then it seemed like you were on the attack um, from the off, and then obviously um, they they got on the attack. Carl Shepard seemed to. I know he had a couple of yards, and when he gets away from you, a lovely ball up the line, Cummins whips it in, and McInerney gets on the end of it. it. Was a lovely goal, in fairness. Mm. Uh, maybe not for you, Gary. What did you think about it? Yeah, I think it's the scoreline wasn't too much of a surprise. Um, when I saw it um, after because I think both teams were probably two of, the, two of the most attack er, well two of the most attacking teams anyway in terms of the fact there was five goals in the game so um, two of the most attacking teams like you got a 4 3, three kind of like the pass side to play Cork like the bomb goes forward as well and um, as I said McNamee kind of like crossing the ball in that kind of thing Cummins is obviously a major addition for them um, that was a major shock in the off season I think it's nice to get him to come back um, the red card was kind of a, a major talking point when I got into it a bit but uh, that kind of changed the game. I suppose Cork had to withdraw in a bit, and we're probably very, very thankful that they managed to get the goals early. Yeah, Coleman's yeah. goal now, in fairness, um, seems to be a bit of a defensive mix up, but uh, I thought he, t he took his chance very well. Yeah, it's a proper poacher's finish, really. He was just sniffing around up there and ended up. Uh, ended up I mean, the keeper got a good hand on it, didn't he? But it was just I mean, the power. He caught it so well, and he was fairly mm. close to well. But even I've watched that goal back, and it's a free kick from inside their half. And it's lost up. Coleman's actually wins the initial header, kind of gets. Bit of head tennis for a while. Doesn't like to touch the ball, uh, touch the ground before it goes in the back of the net. Yeah. So that like as like we're even watching that and we're like our general play is good here and we're now two 0 down after goal. Like so you you had a you you had a bit of a nice play with uh, Giggles, Craig Kelly. Yeah. And um, he had a bit of a scuff shot. I mean, if that goes in, it's what one off. Came well, on. that, we, yeah, that's like, we we had a few things. I know obviously you only see a few bits from Soccer Public, but throughout the whole game we had some really good play like and they just. So he just didn't go in the back of the net for us, but it's, it's a huge amount of positive for us because we were coming in obviously half time thinking, right, we can get back in this game, get an early goal, which we did after 20 seconds, second half, and then come full time. Well, I, I just wanted to kind of get your opinion on the red card before it went on to the yeah. second half. What? Um, the red card, yeah, I actually saw it, I was actually quite close to it, and I know the lads last night were saying going on about intent and stuff that he didn't have <coughs> to do, but. At the end of the day, Kev Toner stood up with a black eye and never has a black eye walking around, it, and I don't think they actually showed that on TV. That he, he just kind of showed him on the ground and um, a couple of your players don't. Yeah, like he caught him. At the end of the day, whether he meant or not, it was dangerous play the way he went up with his angle, uh, sorry, with his uh, elbow and caught him in the eye, caught him in the head and potentially really hurt him. Like, uh, So I think if you look at it like that and if you're a defender, you're going to hope that someone's getting sent off for that sort of thing because I was even speaking to, him, uh, speaking to Mick Lee and it happens so often when players get away with it. So. Yeah, I suppose you would have been the lawyer yeah. as a Cork fan, obviously not. Yeah, obviously, like, at the end of the year, thinking, oh, here's a lifeline for us. Uh, <laughs> this is a lifeline for us here that obviously we didn't take in the end, but it was, I think, for what actually happened, I think the referee made a great decision on our behalf if you're probably disappointed you're a Cork fan, but... Okay, well, what, what was it Bucko said to you then at uh, half time that Because he's came out yeah. for, uh, the blocks for Ireland, didn't he? Yeah, no, we just knew, we knew we had to get one. If you got one early, we thought we'd go on to win the game and we just had to be patient because we knew... Cork probably the best team to go down to 10 men in the league. They just get, they were happy to probably just sit on there and wait for the opportunity from a set piece. Um, so we did, I think we lost our patience a bit in the second half. The first kind of 15, 20 minutes of the second half, we really kind of missed and we got a good few chances and they were struggling even to get out of their own half. We were just, I thought we were patient, kept the ball well. And then one or two passes started to go sloppy and that, that's when we started to panic, I think. And we started then, and how many were lost the ball, they looked a bit dangerous on the counter. And I think they made a change then. Uh, they brought Marcy on about 20 minutes in the game. I think he gave him a bit more legs when they did nick the ball out of us and it broke down. Um, and then I we made. Thought you, I thought your goals were taken well. 
It was a nice header from the corner. Yeah. Oh no, it wasn't a header, so it was not, not a ball, ball. It looked like a header. Yeah. Um, it was a lovely whip in, but um. So what? What were your thoughts? Two one game on. Two one hundred percent. Yeah, because like I said, we we felt in control of the game. We knew we were, I had all the ball. We were just thinking it was going to be a matter of time before we get the chance to score, and then. And you get Colin and Byrne, that's the... Yeah, I think I know so early in the second half, I think it might be 44 minutes here to get a, get a winner. And it was a great finish in fairness, because he, he fights kind of... Yeah, but it was Colin Byrne scored 109 league goals now, as you say, and I'd say 30 cents would have been that sort of goal, so like it was no surprise when I saw him pop up that it was going to go on back of the net. It was just disappointing that we didn't create more kind of clear-cut chances. Yeah. But obviously the way we were playing, it was very hard. Obviously we were missing Christy Fagan and Nigel Williams as well. Yeah. So he's kind of a big focal point for us that we were kind of missing out on. Um, and so then yeah. it was a bit of bitter, er, bitter pill to swallow. Uh, at the end, then Kieran Sadler. Yeah, of course. It's, it's like Brian Murphy slipped from the corner, like, and that's the difference between one point, three points, and no points. Um, yeah, it was a lot exactly off the bench at this stage, and I really thought we were going to push on to get one, and then. You, you know, you just kind of get that feeling of, oh, uh, shit, here's a chance for them, corner, this is what they've been waiting for. And like the fact that none of their players even get a touch on it goes straight in is just, it was really hard to take. Like, first game of the season, big crowd, everyone's excited. We kind of dominated the whole game and then somehow they've walked away with three points. I still don't think it's a negative for, for Pats fans, though, because you did dominate the game against the champions, you know, so... Um, I don't see it as a negative. I know it's a, a bad result in terms of no points gained, and yeah. is our is our starting off the first game of the season with a loss. But I do think it's it's a positive. You can score two goals, because, albeit with ten men, but you still create chances even when they had eleven. So I don't I don't see it uh, as a bad thing for for Pat's going forward. How do you what do you think? Yeah, I think Pat's be definitely looking forward to getting next week. Like they just want those three points on the board as quick as possible. To be honest with you, um, as Dean says, like it, they, yeah, of course they'll be disappointed when you're that close to getting a point and you lose it. Kind of just the depth after really doing by far enough, if not more, to get like the, at least the point, if not the three points. Um, against against the like Cork who like they played well, both teams kind of played well, but like Pat's like dominated possession, so not get three points. They're a point anyway. It's kind of a bitter pill to swallow, but I'm sure. Jay Dean will say that train's probably even very, very energetic this week and that they're, they're ready to go and they're just looking forward to the next game now. Like it's, it's going to be a long season. It's not going to be lost or won in the first game of the season. Exactly. So we'll move on to a game that you're fairly familiar um, with uh, Rovers and Bowers in uh, Dating Home Park. Um, it was a bit of a scrappy game. I don't know. Did you, did you yeah, get a chance I watched to watch it? Yeah, I watched a little bit of the back now. It was a bad game to watch. I think anyone watching was going to kind of be rolled their eyes in the turn. I actually really enjoyed it. I was at it. But I think yeah, I think if you're watching it on TV because I've obviously seen it, I think the atmosphere when you're at the game kind of brings more into life. But if you're watching from TV and people are used to seeing the flashlights of the Premier League and you switch on and Daily Round Park and the pitch probably isn't looking unbelievable and the football is probably similar. So you you you've played in a game like that, like how hard is it to play on a pitch like that? Because I've seen so much stuff online. Oh, it's such a bad ad for for League of Ireland and this and yeah. that. And it's like, but how else can you play on a bobbly pitch? Like, it's hard to play football on a bobbly pitch. Everybody knows yeah. it. Anyone who played football will tell you. You know, you can't really play tiki taka passing. You, you, a lot of it will be long balls. You know. Yeah, I know. But I think it was the difference between at least attempting to play, and you think Rovers with the players they've signed, the kind of massive budget they have in comparison to Bowes maybe and. Kind of the way they're kind of presenting themselves, and to go out and not even attempt to try and play at all was a bit disappointing. Um, like you're signing players like Greg Bulger. Greg Bulger is one of the best players in the league. You didn't sign him to stick him in the middle and try to win headers and flick ons. You signed him to be a footballer in the middle of pitch and control games, which they didn't even give him the opportunity to do. I thought. Um, like yeah, there was a lot of boy passing in midfield that way. Right? Yeah, it was like, like watching an Ireland match. Yeah. I thought it was similar. Like a lot, I've watched a lot of League One and League Two kind of championship games where they kind of play the game in sections. I think where. The goal kick, everyone kind of gets into that small congested idea. Same, right with, that one, so, yeah. same with like throwing stuff, they all seem to just get into that thing and solve it, just getting the ball going that way. Um, which, when you're a better team, like, I, I, you rarely, I'd be surprised if you rarely see us do that this year, just because Booker wouldn't allow it, like, he, it's not the way he, we train. Yeah. We don't train all week to go out and play like that. Um, so that's why, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in the Rovers, I need to attempt to try and play. Um, but look, I'm sure first game to see in there. Thinking like the atmosphere, try adrenaline, try get through the game. Three points is all that matters at the end of the day in that game. So yeah, just uh, it, 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 they both did have a few few chances. Uh, when it was a corner whipped in, and Dini Corkin, he must have 
he must. Uh, he told me after the game he hasn't been playing at all through preseason. But um, I'm sure if you, a fully fit Diddy Cork and Barry Stat comes over and it's on his left foot, he's unmarked in the box, um, and he kind of takes a swipe at it and kind of swings it there mm. and miss miss hits it. And then not long after, uh, Robert go down the other end, and Graham Burke hits a lovely uh, bicycle kick or overhead mm. kick, whatever you want to call it. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, and uh, hits off the post. Uh, it looked like it was leaving chains up with no chance anyway. And then uh, Roland Finn comes in, left foot, heavy nail, and he runs off and celebrates in front of the Bottles fans and gets everything thrown yeah. out. And it was pretty funny to see him dodge everything as well. He was like going at it, and then he was like, oh, he didn't have it. It was funny trying to see him dodge all the, um, the items being thrown at him, you know. After then, it's half time. I'm sure uh, Keith Long was, was giving his team a bit of a rollicking because they weren't really. They weren't really doing much. It was very scrappy from balls. Every time the ball was coming, there was nothing being held in uh, in Rovers' half. Um, it seemed like Rovers were taking the game to balls. But whatever he said at half time, it seemed to work. They came out and they really dominated Rovers. I thought anyway. Yeah, I suppose like with Rovers, they kind of Keelan probably did went into the game expecting Rovers nearly to come out with a different kind of set of play, and they might have even been a bit surprised by the fact Rovers were kind of wanting to play up in the air, that kind of thing, not wanting to get the ball down, not wanting to be used in midfield as much. So maybe he kind of went in looking to change a few things, managed to realign themselves, and just give them a bit of motivation, realizing that they're actually still in the game because. If you look on paper, you got a part-time team and a full-time team. Normally, the full-time team who've signed like some very, very good players is going to come out on top. So I, I think they were kind of nearly surprised they were still like in very close in, in the game and, and that kind of thing, and it was kind of neck and neck. Kind of just gave them a bit of motivation to push on. Like Bose would definitely be looking back even at the end of the season as a mate. This would be a major three points in wherever they finish. Yeah, definitely. And I thought um, when they came out, like I thought Keith Ward was 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 phenomenal on the night. Um, and I thought Paddy Cavanaugh was very good too. Uh, the two of them seemed to really kind of spark balls in, into life. Now, obviously, Ward whips in a nice ball for um, Dan Casey. He, and he's the only one who really shows determination in the, in the box for the header, I, I think. It was a yeah. proper centre half goal, yeah, though, wasn't yeah, it? Like yeah, a, yeah. It was like a village type of header, you know? Yeah, yeah but like Key Ward and like Cavanaugh, they're both like players who are they're experienced in the league at this stage. They know what sort of a game this, like the big crowd, the sellout. Like all the fans kind of going on each other, that wouldn't have even surprised either of them. Like they would have just been able to produce that moment of magic. Both of them are very, very, very nice going forward. Like they can put in those balls, they can see the gaps through the defense and manage to put the ball, lovely, lovely ball in. And uh, nice Keith seems to be involved in all the goals. Um, the, the next ball was, uh, the next goal, sorry, was uh, Shane Supple, so long ball up and uh, couple, bounce off a couple of heads, Ward being the last one. And then uh, next minute, Paddy Cavanaugh finds himself through on goal. And uh, as he says in, in the video, we have him uh, head down, laces through it, and watch the, the net ripple. And he's off uh, celebrating with the, with the chipper ladies uh, at the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that, that was very funny. Yeah, that was. Apologies, was, Rovers fans. <laughs> that was a good one, but I don't think uh, around the video analysis session is going to be uh, looking too fondly on some of the Rovers defense for a lot of that in the game now. Yes, yeah, so to be like, fair. Uh, the, the way they didn't, like, they should have cleared a couple of those balls three. It should never got to the stage where it was true on goal and that kind of thing. So I, I don't think Stephen Bradley's going to have been particularly pleased when he, talk, when he spoke to his players yesterday morning or whenever they looked back at the game. Yeah, he, he stuck around after the game for quite a while as well. Um, but the last goal seemed to be another uh, lot of errors at the back with the uh, Rovers. Um, Ward hits the ball in again, kind of bobbles up whatever way. Uh, one of the Rovers defenders tries to clear it, goes up in the air, and then Casey comes in and loops ahead header over Horgan and goal. Did you, did you see that? Guy? Yeah, I saw it. It's just, I think it was one of those. You just need someone to command the kind of defence in that point of view for Rovers. No one kind of did it. The keeper was kind of hesitant as well. He kind of went and came. Yeah, uh, he was very far off his line at, at that particular Yeah, I, saw it, but I think people are calling him more of a goalkeeper there than anything because I think obviously if you stand on his line, he catches the ball. But I think in that scenario, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, obviously you're a player, but staying alone let the defenders deal with it. Well, unless you know for he's going to deal with it, like, he has to kind of um, make a decision, but there was that kind of lack of communication. I don't know how many games Horgan's played, but he's still a young goalkeeper. Um, even at Galway, I don't know how many games he's played, and obviously to get thrown into that sort of situation with that sort of atmosphere and pressure, and for any young goalkeeper, it's going to be tough. Um, and then his decision making at that point obviously let him down. But 
I'd say as well, he was that kind of had, he had the Rovers fan in his ear, it's a loud kind of, loud uh, background and stuff. Yeah, he has a lot of, like I said, in that moment of time, obviously, he made a snap decision, obviously he didn't pay off because he was hoping, I'd say, more so that the fan will give him a dig out, but just wasn't. Yeah, it didn't happen, yeah. Well, as a, as a, you've probably been in that scenario yourself, what, what, what do you think um, Stephen Bradley will be telling his players now this week? <laughs> I don't like to be honest. I I can picture what he was saying. I know. I already heard that. You don't uh, have to say it word for word. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I know. Gary Shaw came out as well and said there was a few home truths said in the dressing room after the game. But it's very hard. Like I I always find like to come away from those games and take it's hard to take a lot out of those games because it is first game of the season. You've seen over the years how teams can lose the first game of the season and go on to do really well. Especially the type of game it is. That's a very different game I think than what if that game was played in Tala. Um, so I'd say he probably he would have been angry with his players just because that game probably came down to more fight and people being off the ball stuff and little the little things outside of football as opposed to good quality football, yeah. um, which is what he's looking for. But if you don't have both sides of it, that's when you're going to let down and lose three points. Especially at Rovers who are going out every year saying the potential league winners um, not having that side of, other side of the game is going to make you fall, fall short. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll move on to the, the Waterf- Waterford game down there, down the RC. Uh, Waterford, obviously, back in the big time. And um, we have some clips from uh, Peter Clancy, sent us in some clips. So uh, we'll let us watch them there now. <laughs> So, oh, Gareth, what did you think of the uh, waterlogged pitch? Yeah, well, it was it wasn't quite real waterlogged, but it, uh, it certainly didn't look uh, didn't look great for the pictures I saw. Now I wasn't down there, so I'm not sure how bad it actually was when the game kicked off. But I know from the pictures I saw, playing about 30, 35 minutes before, the referees are still doing a pitch inspection. It only got cleared at about 20 past seven for a 7:45 game, so the teams are already trying to like warm up, <laughs> balance their warm ups at that stage. And they even announced over the PA about trying to get people down from the stands to help them clear the pitch. They were all on there with brushes and whatever else to try to get the water off it. I think it only started raining a couple of hours before the game, but it obviously came down really, really heavy and just completely saturated it. But it didn't, uh, <laughs> no offense to the groundsman in the RSC, but it doesn't sound uh, that the, the, uh, <laughs> the water logging or the whatever sort of stuff they have. Yeah, the it's rain. Like, yeah, it I seems to be like it's draining very well. but. Yeah, they looked. They played the game anyway, and it, it, apart from a couple of times, the ball looked to be getting stuck a few times with little patches that maybe they hadn't cleared fully. But other than that, it didn't really probably affect the game, or I don't think it affected the, yeah. the game either. Well, actually, yeah, it, was, it was it was interesting with with Waterford. They had a lot of new signings, and one who was receiving obviously rave reviews was a former teammate of yours, yeah. Aston Harry. How how good is he? From what from what I've seen yeah. on Soccer Republic, he he dominated that game. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, Basti came in with us last year, and to be fair, he'd admit himself he was a bit overweight when he came in. And throughout the season, you could gradually him get better as he got fitter. So and it just it could be slimmer. Yeah. No offense, Basti. Well, no, he played, he his fitness grew massively. Obviously, he was kind of in and out of the team for the first half of the year, and then he kind of really became a huge player for us then probably the last third of the season. Mm-hmm. Um. But he, I think he realised last year when he did start to look after himself better that this was kind of the last chance to learn from in the league of Ireland because he obviously started off PSG in France. He kind of worked his way down kind of Sheffield Wednesday, Carlisle in England. And then when he came over here, I think he kind of realised like he has, a, he, has a young, he has a young kid, he has his missus or whatever. So I think he kind of thought, look, this is my last chance here to kind of step up and make a living out of football. So um, he had a few decisions to make in the off-season off what to do. And I, I remember speaking to him a lot about what he was going to do. Um, and yeah, he obviously chose Waterford because he thinks he's going to do well down there, and hopefully he does because he's a top lad. Like he's he's good in the dressing room. He's he's lively. He's always happy. He's always yeah. dancing, singing. So, um, no, it's a really good addition. Yeah, for you just see him on Noel Corbett's uh, story dancing, and yeah. that and Patrick Levine. So obviously he's left now for slow ago, but when he was there. Um. So yeah. Anyway, with the with the first goal, obviously Derry's goal. 
um, Mackinac with a nice right footed curling ball in and uh, Arganovic gets on the end of it so those type of balls I think for a keeper I don't think are quite you know undefendable I think you'd leave a defender as for that um, I don't know, it kind of, I saw the all back, it was more the conditions I think the play, it was very windy looking at the start of that game and the ball kind of was one of those big kind of loop, loopy ones. Yeah. Um, surprising that Corbett didn't come for because he's usually quite, he's quite good at it but... Um, he's a big unit too. Yeah he's, yeah, he's a good keeper all around, like, he, kind of has, he has everything now. Probably the wind put him off maybe, it was kind of swerving in the yeah. air, he didn't want to go. Um, but no, it was like, it's a great start for Derry, obviously down there, obviously with the bad pitch there, thinking like we can hold on to this here but... Um, yeah, as the game went on, things changed. Yeah, well, even there was a point where here he hits a, a long ball, or a, it was a lovely ball, and it kind of goes around the corner, and then um, Akinali's true on goal, and he seemed to cause um, Derry lots of problems. Uh, yeah. Probably doesn't it's surprise good, either. It's a good pick-up now for, uh, for Derry, and I mean, he lost for balls this year, like they were a lot better once he came back from injury last year, so uh, he's going to send score goals, and they're going to be all right. Like, yeah, they they've added they've added a good lot of players kind of for a team that's just after coming up. They've added very strong, they've added Premier Division players. David um, Webster as well. Yeah, they've added guys with experience in the league. Glorious spirit, David. I, <laughs> I think you have to do when you come up because if you're gonna if you're gonna play the same squad, some teams like to try to reward the players that got them up there, but it doesn't really work in the past from like experience. It just hasn't worked um, for teams in the past. So like they've added guys who are gonna score goals and kind of obviously with the money coming in. And um, Lee Power is now obviously their owner, so he's managed to bring in a good bit of money, and they kind of have a Premier Division budget. Um, already set up where a lot of first division teams coming up are kind of struggling with the step up to first team football or uh, full time football. Um, but they've already they've already kind of made that gap, and they're going to be just fine. And kind of probably have bigger aspirations than maybe a lot of teams that have just come up as well. They'll be looking to push up towards the top half of the table. Yeah. Now speaking of their goals, uh, some nice play then by uh, Feely, and he knocks ball to Gavin Hulhan, and he must be three or four players and fires under the Derry goalkeeper. It was a nice goal, fairness. And he's off, and he's doing the trademark knee slide. <laughs> I, I love that. He's I saw, I saw one of the a couple of them tried knee slide there, and it didn't work out for them all. Yeah. Few of them came knee sliding in after him. <laughs> I've tried a few times. I've yeah. broke my knee on some of the pitches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't, don't know about service only. Yeah. Um, no, but um, then obviously uh, Waterford are getting back into it, and um, from from what I've seen and the reports I hear from the game, it seemed like Waterford were uh, favourites throughout the game. Um, got into the second half then um, <coughs> it was a lovely bit of play I think it was by Hewlett and Obora does a lovely little back yeah, here yeah. Oh, that makes the goal for me and then it's whipped in I think it's by Hewlett and O'Halloran's at the back post then and taps it in cap off a lovely goal but from my uh, I think it was APH um, I was going to check out his YouTube channel um, and subscribe um, but uh, no, I've seen it uh, from his report. He was saying that he thought they were going to come into the end, uh, come into it uh, before the end, but for some reason they didn't. And uh, Waterford just kind of seen see the game, uh, seen the game out. And uh, here he was a lot of people's man of the match. Although David Webster got a bit of a show at the back because he was quite solid. Yeah, no, it's not. I think it's a great result if you're getting the team, if you're the team being promoted that first game of the season and getting points on the board as soon as possible is all. Pretty much everything the league wants to do, but if you're getting promoted and you want to make sure that you're regarded as a Premier Division team that's going to do well, you have to get that first kind of initial win yeah. as early as possible. Um, I think it was great for them to get three points on the on the board. It's great to have them back in the Premier Division, I think. Yeah, it's great to have another team, so it's nice like Dublin, uh, from, a, from a football point of view, just having mm. it spread out a bit more. Yeah, a big club, to be fair. Yeah, they've, they've been gone Terrible. for a good while, I suppose, so a lot of people probably forgot that they maybe have this Premier Division kind of caliber I suppose or yeah. maybe expectation down there with the stadium anyway um, so I, I think like Derry will be very disappointed though to have gone down there to a newly promoted team and to lose in the open weekend I think after last season they were glad to kind of nearly get, the, get it finished with the season and kind of start a new and a fresh yeah. and they would have had a lot of hopes going down um, it's also kind of a tricky time for Derry because they've had to kind of change a couple of, they've had to change their game against uh, Sligo and flip that because the stadium's not ready as well so they're trying to just kind of get everything sorted so they're kind of just looking for the first few weeks of the season probably to try to smooth themselves out and then get up and running because they'll definitely be pushing up trying to look for European football again yeah I don't think the, I think Kenny Shields were pretty much admitted that they were good for the win so fair is fair well we'll move on to uh, Oriel Park where it was a uh, Dundalk Neil at Bray Neil. Um, he had a bit of a match report from Connor Skelly, which you can check out there. Full time here at Oriel Park, Dundalk Neil Bray Neil. Uh, Bray Neil, obviously, they're looking to get themselves back into the Premier League. Um, they're looking to get themselves back into the Premier League. They're looking to get themselves back into the Premier League. They're looking to get themselves back into the Premier League. They're looking to get themselves back into the Premier League. They're looking to get themselves back into the Premier League. They're looking to get themselves back into the Premier League. They're looking to get themselves back into the
Bray Dundalk had most of the running they took the, the game to Bray but Bray always looked dangerous in the counter attack um, a standout performer for Bray was number 7 Corey Galvin who really caused him lots of problems down the left he fleeted it in and out of the game but he made a good uh, a good impression of himself today it's a really good result for Bray Wanderers coming all the way up here to Dundalk they brought about 100 people small following but it worked out in the end uh, there was a notable substitution made on about the 80th minute for Dundalk Sam Byrne uh, signed in from Everton this week made his first appearance for the club but uh, no it'll be Dave Mackey that's the happiest of the two managers tonight with a great result and it leads them in well to the next game on Friday when they take on St. Pat's for Irish Football Fan TV this is Connor Skelly Good night. there you see uh, lovely stuff from Connor thanks as always um, so yeah Connor's report obviously he's talking about um, Dundalk basically controlled most of the game and uh it seems as though that um, like I watch I watch some of the highlights, and I'm really excited to see that player uh, Adoran. I think I said his name right. Ad Adoran. The uh, number, is number eleven. No, he used to play for. I think he used to play for Liverpool. He's uh, he's not Sheva Dukas. Yeah, few complicated names up there. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not. That's Carlos uh, Sheva Dukas. It's the Lithuanian guy. It's Adoran. And uh, he ca he came on, it seemed, and he was just. Oh, he was little fella was wearing the leggings. Yeah. Yeah, he seems to actually do really well. Yeah, yeah, so I'm sorry. Yeah. He looks like an exciting player. I think after a couple of games, like obviously it was the first game, but I think he had some good games in pre season. I, I heard some rave reviews against Brentford, but sure, it's only pre season. But he looks an exciting talent for for the league. Although Bray had some like chances. Aaron Green had a couple of chances, um, and I I felt like Bray almost could have won the game. Yeah, like to be with honest, their we've, chances. You know, we've kind of been we're also playing Bray this weekend, so we've been watching their clips off from the game. We actually played them there two or three weeks ago in the Lens in the Cup, which kind of gave us good indication of what they'd be like, but they've added one or two since then, the likes of Ronald Cochran. Um, and their keeper Dylan. And their keeper, yeah. Um so look, you've made some great saves by the way. Yeah, it's a, he saved two or three from Robbie yeah. Benson right? um, Yeah, Robbie Benson was it was probably the best chance of the game, it was like a header and he flips up over the bar, it was a great save. Uh, so obviously, yeah, we've been kind of studying, even today we're studying what kind of Bray are good at and what they're not so good at. Um, so mm -hmm. obviously the counter-attack the other day was a big thing for them and Aaron Green's pace and power up top was kind of the, the difference maker for Bray. Um, he, got, he got through a few times. Yeah, they, the there was a few times he was just getting out of channel that he just didn't think pay off and he had a few chances that he could have got. Uh, got a show no, we capitalised on uh, Dane Massey era. Yeah. Sorry Dane, you know, I love you. But... Um, yeah, it seems like, but he, yeah, I think Gary Rogers saved it. Yeah, so, like, they have got a the A couple of there. similar chances, they, they seem to be, anyway. Yeah. Sorry, go. Yeah, um, they just kind of sat back and waited for opportunity, they were patient, and, but that's what we're kind of expecting to do again this weekend, to kind of sit back and try to absorb everything we do and try to hit us on the counter-attack that we're obviously aware of um, from seeing what they had there, didn't we? Do you think, like, obviously, Dundalk are, are missing the, the big three that have gone, you know, Fenland, McElhenney and uh, Macmillan. So, do you think it's going to take them a while to recover to, with, with the new players they brought in? I know um, we were talking about a couple of them there, but you know, how do you see the new? I don't you know, Ronald Murray as well. He's after to join in them. They do have a, a couple of good players that are after coming in. They're after getting, uh, was it Daniel Theory you got the other day as well? Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, Sam Byrne from uh, Everton. Yeah, they've, they've brought in a lot of players compared to Right, 12 months ago, at the start of last season, they, they didn't have as many new players in. I think they had a bit more of the same squad from the year before, so they have brought in a lot of players, but they've kind of replaced the talent um, definitely in terms of like replacing guys who can score goals. and they just replaced all over the park, so they have definitely put money into the squad. Uh, I think they're going to be fine. Like There was probably, I, I don't know, a draw against Bray is not a good, it's not a good start. There's no way to gloss over that. But I, I think come the end of the season, they're still going to be up there with Cork. Uh, it's going to be the two of them fighting out. I think the new guys, especially because they brought in Not a couple of guys. Well, well, never know. <laughs> yeah, I think the Dock probably, be, they're going to take a couple of weeks to gel, mainly because they brought in guys from abroad who aren't used to the league. And you always hear these foreign players come and go. It's a more physical league or this different style of play. They're not used to playing against defenders, especially for the, from an attacking player's point of view. And they're not used to the kind of style over here. So that's kind of going to be different to the least they come from. Uh, but they've definitely added guys who have experienced some of the, <laughs> the biggest clubs around them, um, some major clubs with European experience, which is obviously going to help them then going into the summer as well for Europa League as well. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you see uh, Dundalk? No, like, you know, like it's 
a lot of people take the first week because they've been waiting so long for it to come back and so much anticipation that it kind of they take too much out of the first game and like even remember a couple of years ago Dundalk lost first game of the season at home to Drogheda but he went on to win the league um, so I wouldn't take too much out of a home draw to Bray at the end of the day Bray finished fifth last year was it fifth or sixth last year Bray finished like they're not bad they're not a bad, bad team by any means like, um, so like they were set up well the other night they have some good players in the team so I wouldn't take too much out of that they drew at home because obviously they still created a lot of chances They, from what I saw they controlled the game they just couldn't break uh, break Bray down in the end, but if I was a Dundalk fan, I obviously wouldn't be worried. I wouldn't be too disappointed because they've had some really good players. They still have a lot of like top top players in that in that division, and obviously a very good manager. So time will tell. But I'd be very surprised if they weren't still up to the standards they were the last two or three years. Dundalk fans keep the faith. Come on, the town. Um, we'll move on then to the last game, which was played on Saturday uh, at the showgrounds. Sligo Neil and Limerick won. Talk us a bit through your uh, your old team because obviously you left. Um, you know, managers have to leave and, and it seems as though Limerick have to go through a very bad kind of pre-season what, 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 what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, so obviously we had um, Liam McDonald departed very early into pre-season Give us the first, first day, day yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously I, I still talked to a lot of last time day and everyone's kind of giving up to what, what's going on yeah. blah, blah. so um, yeah, I left last year at the end because I don't know I didn't overly get on with the manager too well I don't think a lot of people did and what they were offering players was a bit disrespectful, I thought. Um, they kind of let a few players go, and then a few players just didn't want to stay. We didn't like, you know, the style of play we had at the time wasn't great. Like, I, we had gone from such a drastic of playing one way under Martin Russell to another completely opposite. I couldn't, I, I'd be member one training session where we had to stop, and he completely changed the way we were doing something. So I just, even going into this season, I was a bit apprehensive to even want to sign back. Even though I loved it then, I loved living in there, and I got on really well all the lads in there, I just thought probably the best decision for me, football and wise Because even I was playing right back at the end of last season. Um, fair enough, I was actually enjoying it. I was doing quite well. Well, I left me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, was kind of, I actually was enjoying it, but I just thought it would be best for me to move back and pass it. Like, I was going to move back and pass it. But um, yeah, regarding Liverpool, it looked like a disaster um, on the 2nd or 3rd of January, whenever it was that uh, Neil McDonald left. And then as it kind of went on, the likes of Chilozzi left, who was a huge chef from Barry Cotter left, who was another kind of defensive cover, where LB looked a bit scarce at the back. But Tommy Dunn's actually done really well. He's had some really good players. Like the likes of the two Denny's, obviously, are big players around the league. Michael Sullivan, a few young boys from Cork, Coleman, um, even Dan Kearns, I know, who signed for Neil McDonald at the start. So, like, Going into the game the other night, they must have been quite hopeful because they had a good team and they got some experienced pros in that dressing room now. Yeah, you know, in terms of uh, Sligo, it was their 3,000 game or something, was it? Um, so they, they were trying to do like a 3,000... Uh, 3, yeah, they were trying uh, to get over 3,000 people in. Oh, they there did? Was a, there was a, a 3,000 campaign or something on, yeah, they made it by 65. I don't know whether it was a 3,000 game, but I think they were they were trying this 3,000 campaign or something to get the crowd up. And the crowds were going all, all over the place um, last weekend as well. Yeah, fair play to them. Um, there, wasn't, there wasn't too many chances. I think Alistair Roy had a bit of a chance. It looked like it was deflected. I was surprised at how it didn't go in from the angle it was shown. And then obviously, the, like it's, it's hard to kind of know because I haven't read any reports on the game and Soccer Republic only shows you kind of a certain amount of, of, of clips, as you said. Yeah. So obviously, um, you were saying about the Dennehy's and then obviously he gets on the end of, um, I think it's Darren Dennehy, and he gets on the end of a lovely cross. Boom. And he almost scored another one, which quite similar to it, not long after. Yeah. But it was a bit of messing about at the back by, uh, by Sligo. I thought if they had just cleared it, they, they avoid that goal. But it was, it was just a bit of messing around. Yeah. And then uh, false. I can't remember who false it, but he whips in a lovely ball. Boom. Perfect, Harry. Yeah, no, like Sligo teams, they have a lot of new players as well. And they always... Sligo always seem to be one of those teams that add new players from abroad and stuff. So it's hard, it's hard to tell what they're going to be like. Mm, Pincelli. He's their latest recruit. Yeah. Team. So I've got I've no idea who he is. Um, no, I probably want him to either until it's thirty four. I think he's from Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. They, oh, they, they find these random players. Sorry, they? actually, do you know him? Vinny Finley told me about him. He was playing over in Cyprus. That's actually where the swap deal came with Vinny. Now that I think about it, that's where that there's, there's a bit of info for. Yeah, that was kind of arranged by Vinny Finley. You know. That deal. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I've seen one goal where he just rifles a shot into the top corner. That's the only thing I've ever seen. Yeah. But it looked like a nice goal. You can strike him up. <laughs> 
No, it, 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 was it was that a surprising result for you for from from uh, Limerick and No, because like like you'd never be fearful of Sligo. Um, for the last couple of years, obviously, having back in the day when I was maybe younger, when I was playing for UCD, just four or five years ago, mm. I had to say when they were kind of win the league and win cups. But I think ever since Owen Harry kind of departed, they've always been kind of up and down. So like, you never really fear. Like we, we played them. Uh, started last season, we beat them five one first game of the season, and I don't know what it is. Always I have now in my head that they're not like a team to be afraid of. Like they don't have a particular style of play. They kind of have managers coming and going, all time players coming and going. So it's never really something the club anymore that you kind of be fearful of. Um, so I thought I think Limerick certainly went up there thinking we can get some out of this and it's a good game, first game of the season, especially away from home. Yeah. What about you, Kurt? Yeah, like I think Sly Sly Limerick would would have been pretty difficult actually to call if you were to like put a bet on that now. Um, it could have gone either way. Yeah, I did. No, <laughs> no, it's how it didn't work out, yeah. So <laughs> Thanks, Lego. <Michael. laughs> I wouldn't say there'd be a, I think that a lot of people might have lost or won on that one. Uh, it's, it's a tough one to choose but like Limerick have added well like as Dean says Sligo ever since like uh, the way they've done with their managers kind of bringing in managers out managers in managers out managers I don't know how many managers they've gone through since like since even uh, got on here he left but it, it's an awful lot they seem to go through like at least two like two a season sure. I, fear, I wouldn't fear them if I was playing three either okay um, and so I suppose we'll leave it at that that's been uh, our episode two Gareth O'Reilly from Extra Time though he Dean Clark, St. Patrick's Athletic. Uh, good luck at the weekend. Cheers, I hope you. we get the three points. Um, don't forget to don't tune work. in next week for uh, episode three. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, give it a share. Come on. And uh, if you haven't checked out already, we have a bit of a competition happening this weekend uh, regarding posters we sent from uh, Australia. So check that out. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great week.